1952, a guy named Marvin Minsky invented a device that deeply disturbed many people who saw it. When Arthur C. Clarke, the author of 2001 A Space Odyssey, saw the device, he later wrote about it in an essay saying, I cannot leave Bell Labs without mentioning one more device which I saw there, and which haunts me as it haunts everyone else who has ever seen it in action. It is the ultimate machine, the end of the line. Beyond it, there is nothing. He was talking about this. <laughs> Doesn't look that scary to me. Funny? Absolutely, but not daunting. Apparently, Minsky didn't think so either. Listen to him talk about his invention. One of the gadgets that I invented, which was really perhaps the most stupid machine of all, was I described a little box with a switch on it. And when, when you flip the switch on, a hand comes out of the box and turns the switch off. Uh, so uh, that was nice. Yes, it was nice. Such a cute old man. In addition to being so adorable, Minsky was a genius, considered one of the founding fathers of artificial intelligence. Why would such an intelligent man invent something so silly? I don't know. Maybe he had a good sense of humor. Maybe he was just bored. Whatever the reason, this useless box is actually a bit more intricate than it seems on the surface. Let's see how it works. Any complex object you see around you takes inputs, does something with them, and outputs something. The challenge is to figure out how this works. Clear up the black box. In the case of this useless box, a good first step would be to list out what it does. Before anything happens, the switch is flipped towards the left. Let's call this switch position one. The arm is also inside the box. The moment you flip the switch to switch position two, the arm starts moving upward in a counterclockwise motion and flips the switch back to position one. As soon as the switch is flipped back, the arm moves in a clockwise motion back to where it originally was and stops. Any dummy can flip a switch. But what about the second step? How do you make a plastic arm move when a switch is flipped? Here are the parts Minsky used for this step. There's an arm, a motor with a gearbox, a battery pack, a toggle switch, and some metal wires. I won't go into exact detail of how it's wired, but here's a simplified diagram. First, you have the arm connected to the motor. That combination, plus the battery pack, plus the switch, are all connected in a loop by metal wires. The important part here is the switch. There is a gap in the loop, which means electricity cannot flow. When you push the switch, you're bridging the gap with metal. This allows electricity to flow through the circuit, which spins the motor counterclockwise. Since the circuit activates when the switch is in position two, Let's call this circuit two. Here's what it looks like inside the box. But now there's another problem. When the switch is flipped back to position one, everything stops because there's a gap again in circuit two. This means the arm is stuck on top. To solve this problem, Minsky wired up another circuit so that when the switch is in position one, the electricity flows in the opposite direction as circuit two and the motor spins the arm back clockwise. We'll call this circuit one. There are two issues with this though. How do you stop the arm from hitting the bottom of the box? And why wasn't it spinning backwards in the first place? This is the really clever part. Minsky added another kind of switch called a limit switch in circuit one. When the metal spring is up, the switch allows electricity to pass through. When it's pressed down, a gap opens up, causing the electricity to stop flowing and the motor to stop spinning. How does the spring on the limit switch get pressed though? Were you wondering what this extra material on the arm was for? It wasn't just random. This solves everything. In the initial state, 
No electricity is flowing in either circuit. This is because the main switch is in position one, creating a gap in circuit two, and the arm is pressing against the limit switch, creating a gap in circuit one. When you flip the main switch to position two, the gap in circuit two closes, causing electricity to flow and the motor to start rotating the arm counterclockwise. When the arm flips the main switch back to position one, the main switch gap in circuit one closes. But now, since the arm isn't pressing against the limit switch anymore, there is no gap in circuit one. This causes the motor to spin clockwise until it presses against the limit switch, bringing it all the way back to the beginning. It was a clever invention and is pretty amusing to play with, but it still creeps some people out in the 1950s. Arthur C. Clarke offers an explanation as to why later on in his essay. The psychological effect, if you do not know what to expect, is devastating. There's something unspeakably sinister about a machine that does nothing, absolutely nothing, except switch itself off. A machine that switches itself off. It is possible that in the future, it is just this characteristic that we'd want in the manifestation of Minsky's other brainchild. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing for more content.